It's time to get your geek on with Dave Gramellion. Welcome on Adrian Palicki, a very, very talented, stunningly beautiful actress uh, in so many different movies in, in just in recent memory, really, if you go back to, to G.I. Joe and, of course, the Orville and uh, Legion was a, was a great role as well. Thank you so much for taking time out and calling us here on Freedom 1160 AM KRDY and get your geek on. Oh, come on. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Outstanding. All right. So it, it wasn't until your sophomore year of high school go Panthers, uh, that the, that you first took to the stage. And at the time you were playing basketball, you ran track, you were almost homecoming queen. It seems like you could have done anything that you wanted to, but what was it about being on, on the stage and the screen that really drove you back then? You know, what's funny is I, since I was a child knew I was supposed to be an actress, wanted to be an actress. And it was, it just took up until my sophomore year for me to have the balls to actually do it. And it's all because I had um, this teacher, Mr. Worsall, who was like, you're, you are going out for this play. I already told, you know, the director about you, and you are going to do this. He was my drama teacher. And so it was just so close to, like, the end of the day where I was like, all right, you know what, fine, I'll just show up and I'll do it. And then I got one of seven cast members of that play lend me a tenor, and it changed my life. And, you know, it actually came to fruition. So, so you were just a little shy. Kind of how it evolved. You were shy back then. You just, you, you wanted to be up on the stage, but you just couldn't get up there. Well, you know, it's funny. I was dancing my whole life and since I was a little kid. But for some reason, you know, it's just, it was something that was new to me. And I, I'm always nervous doing something I'm not sure I'm good at. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So um, that was, that was my, my, moment of going oh i actually can do this and maybe i'm not terrible at it you know well i I would think a lot of people would agree that you were definitely not terrible at it (laughs) uh (laughs) especially you 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 got a couple of awards some nominations under your belt so the uh, critics seem to agree with you as well and uh you you've landed some incredible roles so yeah i i think i think the majority is on your on your side now yeah you're you're rocking I think, it i think i'm doing okay i think i, I think i chose wisely <laughs> to los angeles well now going back over my notes here runner up for homecoming queen runner runner yeah. up how did that did that happen come on now <laughs> it's a travesty of justice honestly is what that it was is. a pleasure being nominated at all I was surprised because I wasn't popular really until I started doing the plays and musicals. I, I, um, I have to ask. And, so you made you made the Maxim Top 100 though. You didn't happen to call the, the the young lady who made Homecoming Queen and be like, "Hey, just just checking up, see how you're doing there." No, <laughs> Sarah Valdez was like the sweetest person. She was the non head cheerleader. Do you know what I mean? Ah, she was okay. like nice to everybody. She was beautiful, and I, I she had my vote. You know what I mean? So, gotcha. I, I think that was right. So, so what drove you back then was you finally got the courage. You had a great drama teacher uh, and great shout out there. My wife's a school teacher. So, you know, shout out to my wife also. Um, so that, yeah. that drove you then. What drives you now? I mean, now that you're, you are a, a leading lady in Hollywood, but what, what drives you to, to improve, to get better and to, and to keep landing these roles? Well, you know, it's, it's always for me about the challenge. And I think, you know, I hate being stagnant in something because, you know, like, for example, even on the Orville recently, there's a Kelly Kelly dual episode, and that was so difficult. I had to change back and forth per shot um, into two different characters. So I had to know the entire script by heart. It was just like there was so much to that that was so challenging, and that's what makes me better, and that's what makes me thrive. So when I, when I look at things, it's not about how big the movie is or how big the TV show would be. It's more about the character and how I'm going to feel you know, doing that character. Can I commit to that person? Do I believe that person? So that's, that's kind of what, what drives me and, you know, moves me forward. Now your career 
has kind of been a bit torn lately between DC and Marvel. You were Bobby Morse in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, your brother, uh, Eric, wrote for Marvel, uh, Guardians of Infinity. He wrote an issue there. You were on the, on the DC side of the coin. You were in the Smallville series. You were almost a villain in the Aquaman series. You were really close to being Wonder Woman in I a series. I shot the pilot of Wonder Woman. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, but where where do you land? Do you have a preference for uh, DC or Marvel? I can't answer that. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> it's okay. We we won't tell. I promise. No, I like no. my <laughs> career. Okay. I have options. We won't tell Disney who owns both Fox and Marvel. Yeah. No way. No. Disney totally won't know. They'll never find out. No. Exactly. No. Definitely Marvel. <laughs> wow, um, you better keep your mouth quiet there. I, <laughs> quiet, Mickey, stop that. <laughs> Sorry, he he always watches whenever we interview people, so, you know, he keeps an eye on of us. Of course, of course he's going to come out. <laughs> um, okay, well, do you have a favorite character, then? A favorite e- e- either, character. Either, either, either side, you know, somebody okay, that you so just love. This is my, so, I mean, listen, I have, I have a Supergirl tattoo. Okay, oh, first nice. and foremost. That was my second tattoo ever. But I will say that, you know, I've been lucky um, to play those characters. And even, like, the Wonder Woman pilot, it didn't go, but I got to wear that suit and I got paid for it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That was such a beautiful moment of my life. And I would love, the one character that I'm really lacking under my belt is Rogue. Oh, yes. I would love to play Rogue. Oh, I wish you could see my eyes right now. They're the size of dinner plates. That's, Yes. (laughs) Oh, that'd be perfect. Can you work on the southern accent, too? Oh, you see Friday Night Lights? Listen, I know it's a different one. I can des- I can definitely do that southern accent. Perfect. Oh, yes. Oh, no, that'd be perfect, especially now that we're moving into a new new phase with Marvel. They brought in the X-Men. Exactly. I can, I can see so that. So I see you guys, you know, put it out there. Let everybody know. It's the thing that should happen. We're on it. We're on it. We we All have right. a crack marketing team. We got a crack marketing team of exactly two people. We are we'll put both of them on it. <laughs> It'll be. I believe in you. Don't worry. Uh, now, of course, I got <laughs> I got to slip this question in here, and I'm sorry this wasn't in the notes, but it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. Where is the Wonder Woman outfit? You know that is a very good question. I'm sure they sold it to somebody. There were three made. Oh. In, and by the way, in my body body type they had to mold it to my body my frame wow they would not give me one no how dare they i know they just kept it in wardrobe that's it that's a true i don't know what they did with it that's a crime i know that they used it in another david e kelly show in an episode (sighs) which he asked he actually asked me to come and play that role and i was like i don't think i feel comfortable (laughs) doing that um so another person wore my costume Wow. But they wouldn't give me one. Oh, okay. Like, That's Do you know a how often I would wear that? Do you know how lucky Scott would be if I had that thing? <laughs> okay, we're gonna cut, we're gonna try our best to keep this a family <laughs> show, so we're gonna stop that right there. And I'm sorry. We're we're gonna let the audience just kind of you know imagine how lucky Scott. And by the way, I officially hate Scott now. Uh, I'm just gonna put that out there. <laughs> okay, all right, we'll move. We'll we'll move on. There is literally no good segue out of there, so I'm just gonna go right to the next question. Yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, now my face Awkward. is red. Um, all right, so your thoughts on Endgame? Uh, that that just came out. I'm, I'm sure you surely you've seen it by now. I hope I have not seen it. Yet. <gasps> oh wow. Okay. I All know. right. Well, in that in that but case, I do know about the snap. Yeah. I okay. do know about the snap. Okay. Do you think Bobby survived? I don't know. This mm. is this is the thing. You know, she's just she's Bobby's smart, and she like Black Widow. You know, are just super talented at what they do but are not necessarily gifted with this, like, you know, the ability to fly mm. or, you know, superhuman strength. So there's this level of me that goes, how cool would it be if she survived? But what is the real likelihood of that? I, I kind of think I mean? when it comes to it, I think Bobby is tough enough and sassy enough to where as soon as she started to turn to dust, she would look at it and go, oh, hell no. And like the dust would be like, <laughs> oh, my bad. And just leave. I like this. I like this take and this attitude. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, now, you've been, you've been working with Seth MacFarlane on The Orville for s- several years now. Can you describe his work ethic, compared, especially compared to other directors that you've worked with? Uh, you know, 
I think that there's a misunderstanding about, like, we have so much fun on set, but, you know, Seth's not just sitting there making jokes, laughing all the time. You know what I mean? He's such a perfectionist, and this is the world that he's created and wanted to create since he was a child. So it's everything is very, very, very important. So he's hands-on when it comes to almost every department, everything. And, you know, so it is intense, but you also know you're making something really, really, really special. That's um, true. Mm. Because if you can get to where he's seen it in his head, then you know you're doing something right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, uh, and and I know we all appreciate the tone that the show has taken. There was a lot of concern that it would be, you know, family guy in space. And I know the studio was kind of pushing for that angle. But I'm I'm mm-hmm. so glad that he's been able to steer it to a more serious and dramatic tone. One hundred percent, and that was really that was hard for us early on because people didn't know what the show was. But that's like that's the point, you know what I mean? It's it's letting an audience use their imagination and, and realizing how smart an audience is. You know what I mean? So I think once people kind of grasp on to well, we, there's nothing we can expect per episode. It's mm-hmm. very very similar to Star Trek in that sense. You know, you have episodes that are light and fuzzy, and then you have episodes that are intense, and, you know, you don't crack one smile the entire thing. So I think that he's kind of kept true to that type with maybe a little bit more of a wink, you know? That's true. Um, and I'm just I'm really thankful that people uh, not only got it, but have embraced it and love the show. Yeah. You know, I- and it's going to be weird because I, I literally just said how much I love the serious and dramatic tone. But one of my favorite Scott Grimes moments is when he's geeking out about the pizza party in the pilot. <laughs> it's, oh I, I just like, like, oh, Captain, a pizza party. Can we go, please? Can we go, go? I want to go to pizza party. I, I thought that was, oh. that was so much fun. And is, is he is he like is he what what he is on set? Is that what he is offset as well? Oh, he's the worst. He's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> How you is know, he the worst? I just, you know, I just feel sorry for him. That's why I'm married. I'm, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, he's the most amazing human on the planet. And, you know, he, he and I would have the most, I mean, honestly, we became best friends. And that's how, it, you know, it, it evolved into something more. But just by having so much fun on set and then having so much fun off set, you know, he's just, He's, he can be very serious. Obviously, he's very, very smart. But there is such a lightness in him and a youth that is is we never have a dull moment between the two of us. Yeah. And it's just and he's like that with everybody. And we're, so, we're speaking with Adrian Palicki here from the uh, the Orville and Legion here on Freedom 1160 and Freedom 1160 com. Um, is it OK? Yeah, feel free to tell me no, because I understand it's, it's a personal moment and you're certainly entitled to that. But uh, how did he propose where and, and circumstances and all that sort of thing? We have a favorite place in Austin where, where we live and, and um, that we've vacationed to a couple times. And, you know, it was New Year's Eve, Aww. but, you know, like five o'clock before we've been drinking. Because he really wanted me to remember, and he also wanted, you know, if I said yes for it not to be a mistake. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. He wants to make sure you're really sure you know what you're saying. I mean, really. I really (laughs) want to make sure that this is the right answer. Um, But he he kind of, he thrown off the scent. You know, we talked about marriage, and, you know, he said he would eventually someday. But, you know, he kind of threw me off. He's like, I don't want you to think lots of guys would do it on this day and you know we're going to our favorite romantic place and I just don't want you to get your hopes up that that's happening I, I will do that but I don't want to do it when you're expecting it so I just don't want you to be disappointed and actually it was really nice to hear because I was like okay great this is not something I'm going to go and have a wonderful time and not expect that he's going to ask me to marry him. and that night I got all primped and I went and met him and our pup out on the, um, the dock on the lake and he's gotten a really nice bottle of champagne, mm. and you know we're sitting there talking, uh. and all of a sudden he puts on our song, um, "Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now," and Aww. he uh, he after he'd already given me some of these gifts, right? He starts giving me these silly gifts for New Year's. He got me these silly earrings to kind of throw me off the scent because it's the same kind of box, you know. And I mean, he gave me this teddy bear. <laughs> He got our dog, like, this cute little bone, you know, Aww. and so it was really sweet. But I'm feeling the bear, and I'm like, 
honey, this beer doesn't work because it was there's something hard in the middle. And he's like, okay, oh god. So then he's like, stand up. And so I stand up, and he gets down on one knee. He opens, he like open the open the bear, and I open the bear, and inside was a box. And he um, he's like, last night I had the pleasure. He couldn't even get it out of talking to Jeff Palicki and Nancy Palicki. <laughs> And um, I asked for your hand in marriage. I asked if I could be lucky enough to spend the rest of my life with his daughter. And um, so then we were both kind of crying. And then I go, yeah. That's all I could get out was a yeah. <laughs> the only thing he remembers, by the way. He's like, she didn't even say yes. She said yeah. She said, and I'm like, yeah. I didn't say it like that. I said it through tears. So That's okay. I'm about ready to be in the same state. <laughs> That's an awesome but then we go, story. Then we go into like the hotel, and everybody was in on it that worked there. It was such a great, beautiful time. It was just so. It was like the love and all of it was just massive, and the thought. Was this is the beautiful. best interview ever we've ever had on the show. I love it. Oh, oh this is so cool. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, mm. Yes, uh, yeah, we're doing an interview. Okay, all right, we're good. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was so good. Okay, so here's the fun. Qu- here, here's the fun question. We, we're running out of time, and I always want to leave everyone with a fun question. Your plane okay. is stuck on the tarmac at LAX. No end in sight. You are not getting off that plane. It is not going to a terminal. There's not a prayer. Which Orville cast member, past or present, do you want by your side? And you can't pick Scott because that's too easy. That's not fair. That's too really easy. Guy, he's my best friend. It's too uh, easy. Got to pick someone else. Past or present. Orville cast member. he's so capable, too. We could figure it. We could MacGyver that stuff. <laughs> well, um, Bobby Morse could. I have no doubt in my mind. But sticking <laughs> to the Orville. Uh, I don't know. Who would I pick? Who would I pick? Who would I pick? You know, I think I would probably pick Peter Macon. He's like, he's a family member, and I love him, and we have the best time. And you know what? At the end of the day, we just drink it off. It'd be fine. <laughs> just you know? Be like, uh, stewardess, uh, excuse me, just leave the cart right yeah. there. Just leave it. Exactly. <laughs> We're, We're good. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, a- Adrienne, you have been a delight on this show. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy schedule to call in. And we awesome. really truly appreciate what y'all have crafted with the Orville. Do, do we do we have any thoughts on where season three is? Where where are we with renewal? Anything? I, I you know I I I'm hopeful that we have a season three, and um, I can only imagine how much exponentially better the second season was. That the third is probably going to be like a movie a week. So. You know, I know, Scott, I know Scott was hopeful for a season 17, so it'd be nice to have that type of job security, in, especially in y'all's I line would, of work. I, I wouldn't mind retiring on the show. That'd be fine. <laughs> okay, well, as soon as y'all hear something, we're dying for news. We, I mean, we just, we got to know. So please let us know, and, and we'll, we'll get the word out. Um, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, we really appreciate you taking thank the time. You. And uh, you are welcome back here anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Adrienne Palicki, soon to be Mrs. Mrs. Adrienne Palicki Grimes? Grimes Palicki? Adrienne Palicki, married to Zach Grimes. There we go. (laughs) That'll work. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thanks, y'all. I really appreciate it.